All right, welcome everyone. We have a special treat today. There's going to be some physical activity. I think you'll enjoy it. We have Salvador Mendoza doing his pinata attack talk. Salvador, take it away. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be in the Afcon this year, this 29th edition. It's, it has been a very difficult year, but the COVID cannot stop the signal, so here we are. Let's talk about the piñata attack and who is Salvador Mendoza. Salvador Mendoza is a security researcher and proudly member of the Ocelot offensive security team from Meta Base Q. And today we're going to talk about the piñata attack or pin automatic tri attack. During the last years, the last six years, I have been presenting four different research here in DAFCON about payment systems, and today it's not different. We're going to talk about the contact payment systems or EMV cards from the any bank institution. So what is the motivation behind this talk? It's about when I was a kid, I was watching Terminator 2. I don't know if you remember John Connor brute forcing an ATM. And I was wondering, it could be possible to do that in the actual payment systems? Uh, you don't remember that scene? I want to show you uh, yes, a small part of the video where John Connor has this adapter uh, put it into the ATM and has this small pocket computer, what is what I thought initially, and runs this brute force attack. It was pretty awesome to see it when I was a kid. And I was wondering, one day I would try to do that. I was going to keep an eye when I was researching about payment systems. And the main, the main point was, at the end, to have the opportunity to have that smile of John Connor when he put the money. You can see it on his face. And, but the most important, to have the money in my hand, right? So uh, let's start with the agenda for today. We are going to have an introduction to the terminology. Also, we're going to talk about the EMB transaction flow, which is basically how the data from the car goes from the terminal to the back end of the uh, financial institution. And after that, we're going to talk about the inadequate implementations that some institutions are using and how they need to prevent it. After that, of course, we're going to have a demo, which is one of the main parts of this stack. And finally, some conclusions regarding this presentation. So let's start with the terminology for this stack. We're going to see some terms that we're going to use throughout the presentation. One of the most important is secure element. For um, basically, the secure element is in charge to keep the secrets of the card. Basically, when the terminal sends a challenge to the card, the secure element sign that transaction to validate it. After that, we have the cardholder verification method, or CVM, which basically is when you are making a transaction and the terminal prompts to input a PIN, for example. That's one of the part of the verifications. Or when you need to sign the transaction. The APDU is the application protocol data unit. It's basically how they communicate between the card and the terminal. Um, Sadly, it's not an encrypted protocol, so anyone can sniff the traffic between the card and the terminal. And we can see this protocol in different technologies, such as NFC technology or same technology they are using on your cell phone. So for example, they need to tag in the APDU protocol or the layer number seven in the ISO. So also the ICC for integrated circuit card, we're going to see this term when the transaction is going to the offline mode, which is basically when the terminal validates the transaction and it doesn't send any data to the back end of the financial institution. The PRC, one of the most important terms that we're going to use today is for pin retry counter. The pin retry counter, basically what it does is a counter that has normally three attempts to when you are trying to put a correct uh, pin into a transaction. If you put a wrong pin, this counter is going to decrease one until it gets to zero, which means you are not going to be able to use any other pin. This pin retry counter, when it's, when it's in zero, that means that we have a pin block card and you are not going to be able to use another pin. This is a mechanism to protect against brute force attacks. But in this tag, we're going to see how this could change, right? Um, also, the ARC and ARPC, 
is for authorization response code. This is when the financial institution authorized the transaction or declined the transaction at the last part of the of this flow. So let's talk a little bit about the contact payment. What is a exactly contact payment? Basically, the contact payment relies on the contact between the card and the terminal. Basically, when you insert it or when you dip it into, into a terminal. And you leave the card into a terminal until you finish the transaction. That's normally what is a contact payment. So this is a typical EMV flow, which basically what happened when you insert the car into a terminal, the car is detected, and after that, the terminal lists the applications. At this point, the terminal is going to know if the car is a MasterCard, Visa Card, Amets, or any other brand. After that, select the application, and it goes to different process until the transaction is complete. That means that the trans transaction could be um, a accept, accepted transaction or it could be a declined transaction. But it has to follow this process. One of the most important or two of the most important process here is the verify card holder. How, how the car or the terminal verify this, this card holder. And also, one of the, another, another process very important is if the transaction is going to be offline or online mode. Offline is when the car and terminal make an offline transaction, which means it doesn't send any data to the back end of the financial institutions. And online is when the terminal sends data to validate the transactions in real time. So what is the process of this, all of this uh, data between the car and the terminal? So basically, the terminal sends commands to the car, and the car responds back. It's like when you are in, your, in the shell, typing a command, and the terminal always answers you back. It doesn't matter if you put the wrong command. The terminal always, always answers you back. So basically, in the first phase, we have the card identification. The second one is the card holder uh, verification, and the third one is the uh, authentication. Uh, sorry, the authorization uh, transaction for the for the financial institution. So the protocol for this communication is the ISO 7016. It's for contact con contact uh, technology, and one of the most important is the application APDU layer which basically is how they interact with each other in this communication process. To understand this communication, they need to follow some format. The format basically is uh, implementing APDU commands and APDU responses. We have the classes, the instance, parameter one, parameter two, and the body of the data, right? After that, we have the APDU response from the card, which basically is the data. And we have the trailer. The trailer basically is the status of the previous command, if it is secured correctly or not. So let's say, for example, that we have this, um, this terminal command, and we're going to break apart. So we have the class, we have the instruction, we have the parameter one, parameter two, the command length, and the command. So we can see all the, all the instruction of this, of this command. Basically, it's a TLV codification, tag length value. And we can see a car response. We have the data and we have the trailer. You can guess that the trailer at this point is a 90, 0, 0, right? So basically, we have the data on the, the 90, 0, 0, which means that the previous command was executed correctly. So how we can decode this data? Uh, as I mentioned, we can use a TLV decoding method, or we can use automatic decoders, like, for example, EMV Lab that you can decode this data. And you can see what is inside of this, of this data. But one of the most important parts is how we can analyze this data automatically, because we want to research inside of this, of this data. And if we do it by hand, it's going to be more complicated. That's why we designed ELMA, EMV Laboratory Middleware Assistant. What it does, basically, is that assists you to analyze this EMV communication process. Just to give you an idea how they look like. So Elma is based on SimTrace 2. It's an open hardware project for SIM technology when you can sniff uh, SIM data from cell phones, for example. And you can emulate that as well. And the Elma side, we have a board that you can basically sniff EMV data from terminal and the car. So we use a SimTrace as base to design this new technology uh, to use internally in the company 
to research about this process. Some of the characteristics of this board it implements USB-C, ESP32, so the board by itself can connect to a server to process data, gets back, and emulate it if it's possible, or it's necessary to do it. It has Wi-Fi connectivity, different adapters for input and output, and of course, you can have different modes like sniffing, emulating, many in the middle, and different, different things that we are going to discuss later. So, for example, this is how you sniff data from a car to a terminal. Basically, the ELMA is going to be in the middle, it's going to get the data from the car, um, from the terminal, and it's going to uh, dump it by USB, for example, and you can analyze it in the client side. You can analyze it, process it, and respond back to one side or another. So it's one of the most important parts of this, of this project. To understand a little bit more about the tool set of ELMA, it's necessary to understand a few concepts regarding um, the technology. So the idea of implementing ELMA is to have this device that ca can help you to different tasks. One of the most important is sniffing traffic. The second one is emulator, which basically how you can tag to the terminal simulating that you are a physical car by basically you are embo a board, in this case ELMA. And, uh, in the middle of the emulator, we have the main in the middle, which basically you can change terminal commands, alter data, adapt car responses, and one of the most important parts is modify any EMV tag value. Also, uh, another specific tool that we have is the APDU faster, which basically to send uh, scramble data to the terminal to the car to see how they respond, basically stressing implementing different behaviors in the data. And finally, we have the relay, relay attack, which basically the device could be remotely in another location on the car in another, uh, another place, and they can send data over the internet. Inside of the client, we have uh, the virtual smart car project, which basically you can emulate uh, being a visa or a uh, EMV car or whatever, any, any kind of brand implementing software. And it, was, is, it is at the core of this, of this client side of, of the ELMA. So with all this uh, previous how ELMA works and everything related with the research, I'm going to go to jump to the inadequate implementation that we found in some bank institutions. So uh, let's, just, let's just start analyzing all the process that I mentioned before. How the car authentication works, how the car holder verification and the transaction authorization are implemented. So let's start with the car authentication. In the car authentication process, the terminal um, basically listing the application of the car when you search it, and it will know if the car is a Visa or MasterCard and it start reading data from the car. After that, it's going to be the car holder verification method where the terminal is going to prompt to enter a PIN, for example, or to uh, signature, do the signature of the, of the paper, right? It could be different car holder verifications. And finally, the transaction authorization. Basically, is when the transaction is declined or is approved by the, by the bank. If the transaction, of course, is in online processing. But we're going to be focused specifically in the car holder verification phase. What is the car holder verification phase? Is this process when the terminal prompts something to uh, verify the transaction. That could be the PIN or could be the signature. So, what are the different options that we have in the car holder verification method? We have no CVM required, field CVM processing, signature paper, encrypted PIN verify online, plain text PIN verification performed by ICC, which means basically it's an offline transaction. It verifies the terminal with the card. Plain text PIN and signature paper, encrypted PIN by ICC, encrypted PIN by ICC and signature paper. One of the most, the most used is the encrypted PIN verify online when you're using the ATM. That's one of the rules. All the time they need to verify online. But there are some terminals that depending on the technology, it can play with these different, different methods. But how the terminal knows what kind of technology the car has? For example, let's say that we have this response for the car. The car needs to tell the terminal, you know what? This is the technology that I'm capable of. So in one of these answers, we can find the 8E car holder verification method list, which basically is a tag 
specifying which are the CVM inside of the car. Inside of this list, we have all the verification that are possible in this car. In this case, we have the encrypted pin online, if the terminal supports CVM. After that, encrypted pin by ICC. The third one is the plain pin by ICC. And finally, signature and no CVM required. So, this is the order which basically tells the terminal, you know what? You need to go from the first one to the end, the last one, to, to see if you can verify this transaction. But what happens if I flip the values, let's say, instead of no CVM required to the encrypted pin online? That could be another attack for DEFCON, right? We are going to be focused on the plain pin by ICC value. What is the plain pin by ICC? Which means I can send a command to the card. In, we, we can verify a pin specifically to the card be, because the card by itself has that pin and the secure element. So basically, I can prepare a command in this particular case, one, two, and three, four, send it to the card, and the card could answer in different ways. One of the most important, of course, is 9000, which means it's a correct pin. But it could be different. For example, 63C2, which means wrong pin, and you have two more attempts left and the pin retry counter. 63C1, which means wrong pin and one more attempt left, and 63C0, wrong pin and no more attempts left. When you are in the last one, means that the card is going to be pin block card, which means that you are not going to be able to send another pin to the card. To reset this pin, pin retry counter, it could be in different ways that we're going to discuss, discuss in, the, in the next uh, slides. So, contact payment. Let's focus it on the cardholder verification method. Let's say, for example, that we pass the card identification process and we are in the cardholder verification method and we are going to try to brute force with three different pins. First, we need to check how many attempts left in the pin retry counter. So, on this, in this uh, phase, the pin retry counter is three, which means we have three attempts left in the pin retry counter to start trying to brute force. I start with the first pin, 0718, and I got the response, 63C2, which means it's a wrong pin and you have two more attempts, right? We continue with this process in the last pin, 0720, means that we have, uh, we got the response, 63C0, which means it's a wrong pin and we don't have more attempts left. So, the question here is, if the pin retry counter is equal to zero, how we can reset it to the previous value? And basically that's the pinata type, how to do it. So there are two common ways that you, you can reset this pin retry counter. One is when you call the bank institution and say, you know what, I forgot my pin, I send me a new one. You, they send you a new one and you go to ATM, put that pin, and that pin retry counter uh, gets the previous value, right? The second one is you remember your, your pin and go to an ATM and put that pin. When you put that pin specifically, the ATM is going to be in the car management and it's going to reset this pin retry counter. But another, another one more interesting is when this car management can do it the car by itself, which means that after a uh, application cryptogram, the bank institution can sense data or a command to the car to reset this pin retry counter which we are going to use it to try to do it in this specific attack. One of the most important parts of this data is in the SDU or car status update, which contains data for the bank institution or the financial institution when it responds to the transaction, which means it could send data to the card or a command to the card to reset this pin retry counter. How we can, res how we can make a transaction if we don't know the pin? That's one of the questions because we need to make a transaction to reset it. Well, we can do it in a credit card transaction or flip the values that I mentioned to no CVM, um, cardholder verification method, and the transaction can go through. So this is a way to reset this pin retry counter in some financial institutions. So let's focus where that happened. Basically in the last part of the transaction when the terminal sends the data from the financial institution to the card. That's where the pin retry counter resets. At that point, that means that the, one of the most important parts 
is the transaction authorization process to reset the spin retry counter. I noticed a few bytes when I was doing this research. For example, this one is one of the normal um, generation of the cryptograms. But I noticed that a few bytes are changing when you are going to reset the spin retry counter from the terminal to the card. And you can see it here, 0318 which basically means that it's going to reset the pin retry counter in the card. If we analyze the bytes, we can see is the user author, author, authentication data from the bank institution, which basically is a, comma, a special comment to the card to the, um, auto reset this pin retry counter. So, we need two things to do the pin out attack. One, we can do the plain pin by ICC verification method. And the second one, the financial institution will reset the PRC if the, this PRC is equal to zero. So, how we can set up this Elma Piñata attack? So, we need to use a, in, in this particular case, I use a GPD Pocket 2 and a card reader, SCR 3310, which basically is one of the cheapest ones that you can find on the internet. Basically, from here, I'm going to take the original data from the card. After that, we're going to need Elma, of course. I'm, I'm going to use a sum up POS system that I can control by my cell phone. It's important to have a sum up in this case because to reset the pin retry counter, we need to make a real transaction to, to do that, right? To be able to do that. But of course, if we start thinking about it, how we can automatize this process of the, you know, clicking to make a transaction to reset the pin when we have the PRC equal to zero, right? So I'm going to use the auto clicker to run a macro so you can do it automatically for me until it finds a correct pin. So this is how the setup looks like. We have the GPD Pocket 2, Car Reader, Elma, and the Sum Up. Basically, we're going to extract, extract the, the data from the card implementing the SCR card reader. We are going to go through the client side and the pocket, and we are going to process the data, send it back to Elma, and it's going to emulate it. And it's going to process back and forth between these two devices. Okay, what's going to be happening inside of the client side? We're going to have the card reader is going to connect to the virtual card reader, it's going to process the data, and after that, it's going to set this data to the Elma device. And Elma, consequently, is going to send it to a terminal to process this, this attack. So, if we analyze it like in a graph, so we have, we're going to check first if the plain pin, plain pin, sorry, by ICC is, it has the verification method on the card. After that, we're going to check if the pin try counter is greater than zero. Uh, we're going to try to brute force three different pins and we are going to ask if there is a correct pin. If it's not, it's going to go into a loop until we'll try to find the correct pin. Another question is how we can avoid the charge because to reset this pin retry counter, we need to make a transaction, right? But how we can avoid that, that charge that, for example, in this case, $5, that, that's the transaction that we will make. How we can avoid this? So basically, in the last part of the communication between the terminal and the card, we can take the last response from the card and remove it, erase it. So the terminal is going to say, you know what, I got an error. I, I, I'm not going to complete the transaction, but the pin retry counter is going to be reset because it happened in the previous, the previous command. So the, we're going to make the transaction just to reset the pin retry counter, but we're going to avoid the charge of this transaction. So uh, let me play this video so you can see what's going on. Basically, we have the card and the card reader. We have the client. We have the sum up connected to the LMAP. And we have the cell phone, which is connected to the sum up, which is going to run the macro to do this demo. So basically, I'm running the client. We're going to start with the first transaction. So in this process, basically, it's like a normal transaction. We're getting the data from the, from the card reader, processing the client, sending back to the Elma, and Elma is sending this data to the terminal. So we start with the three different pins. 
we got the pin retry counter equal to zero, you, we need to reset it. So we need to do another transaction. We we'll start a new transaction automatically, and we are going to try three more different pins, which are going to be increased to the last ones. And after that, uh, we, we didn't get any correct pin, so we try another transaction to reset this pin retry counter. At the end of this, of this um, try, we're going to see the correct pin of the car because the response from the, from the car basically. So we can see that the correct pin is the 0722 because the answer from the car was 9000, which means it's a correct pin that we already tried. So basically we, re we reset the pin retry counter making transactions but avoiding the charge and simultaneously trying different pins uh, until we find the correct one, which is 0722. And we can make transactions, of course, with that pin, right? I didn't, uh, I was avoiding the cashback because it was too much money, so I must use 50, 22 because, you know, yes, to, to test it. Um, and we can see that it's an approved transaction implementing the pin that we brute force already. So, thank you. I want to thank you, these fellows, that they're helping me a lot with this research. Felita Buen, Nahuel Grisolia, Daniela Garcia, and of course, MetaBaseQ for all the support in this, in this research and presentation. And nothing more to say, I was wondering who wants to play with a piñata. I want some volunteers that want to play with it. Come on, go ahead. Let's try, let's try to see what is inside of it. Some talk and some cards. <laughs>